pleased to hear that, which leaves me even less to say here because I know you're going to be subjected to a speech from me a little later in the afternoon, so I won't need to hear it twice. But uh, I just want you to know, as it hasn't been said already, we're very serious about this. This isn't something we're just going to suggest to the fellows up on the hill and then walk away from it and think of something else. It is a major part of our program, and it fits in with what I've always believed, that government, government can be a partner for the private sector on some things, but uh, not as it's been so many times in the past, a senior partner. And we know that there are things that we have to do and legislation that we have to get to enable this to go forward, but we're counting believe me, on the private sector on this. I think it's within the framework of what we've always believed about our country and what we want to want to see happen, competitiveness. And I don't think I could ever get used to the United States being second best in anything. We'll set out and do the things that have to be done. Mr. President, we're going out yeah. we did talk a little bit about the fact that uh, we no longer control one house up there on the hill and that uh, this thing has a superficial appeal. This idea of protecting, jo saving jobs has a superficial appeal out there in the uh, heartland, and that it's entirely possible that the Congress might run off here and enact a piece of legislation that's very pretentious in nature, like the House bill that passed last year, and that we might be, uh, we might find ourselves calling not only for support for our own package, but support for veto. We suggested yes. Don and I that you'd be quick to veto that kind of. A yes, I would, and it's. I'm old enough to remember the smooth Holly experience, uh, what it did to somebody that was just getting out of college for a job in 1932, uh, when the government was putting ads on radio at that time, don't leave home looking for work, there is none. Uh, so I, if you listen to that, I went and got a job in a radio station. <laughs> I had $100 a month. but. Uh, Yes, this is, this is very definitely uh, part of it. It's not only that we work and we'll work from our end at government what it can do and you in the private sector what it can do, but we do need your support and help when we're dealing with some up there on the hill who would go right back to that smooth all the idea. Some who think that the answer to another great problem we have and that, believe me, we are dealing with and doing our best with, and that is the deficit their idea that when you just raise the taxes. I have just passed on some <coughs> figures here from an article on maybe that this is part of what's wrong with those other nations out there who are a little behind us in several things are among our trading partners. I, I was amazed. I had never realized this. But the news last night was full of Ireland having some 30,000 people a year most of them coming, trying to come to this country as immigrants and so forth. Undoubtedly one of the poorest nations, all of Europe, Ireland. And if they just copy one thing that we've done, I think that a lot of the problems would go away. And that is for those people that think we ought to be increasing our taxes. I think a great deal of what's wrong with Ireland is the fact that at $12,000 of earnings, the tax rate is 48 percent. And at $19,000 of earnings, the tax rate is 60 percent. I don't think they have to look very far beyond that to find out where they could make a definite change if they would restore it. Yeah, that has a way of really just bringing your hands down. Yeah.
But we'll, we'll start without them and make them catch up. <laughs> Syria, 